financial markets are fascinating. If you can predict what, what they are going to do, then you have the opportunity to become extremely rich. However, if they suddenly fall and we are not expecting it, then this can this result um, actually causes a lot of damage to the entire world and um, this is highly problematic. Financial markets and traders acting on financial markets are producing a vast amount of information <coughs> when they go along. Using these data sets generated and recorded at the stock market can help us to analyze yeah, how many of them, how many traders made the decision to buy or to sell, at which price and when. What this data doesn't tell us is what actually was involved in making this decision. So how these traders came to the decision to buy or sell. So let's think about how you or, or I make a decision. We are collecting a lot of information to evaluate which options we might have and what possible consequences might be involved. Together with my collaborators, I, I realized at some point that nowadays, given our interaction with technology, a lot of disinformation gathering we are doing occurs online. Typically, a search engine, just as Google, is the first part of call. And luckily, Google records very precisely what people are looking for online. So if we would be able to access this information, would this help us in order to say something about subsequent stock market moves? We looked at the situation during the 2008 financial market crisis, what happened on Google. Together with my collaborators, um, Daniel Wright and Gene Stanley, we looked at the question, what people are searching for around the stock market fall. It's very well known that the, that the company Lehman Brothers caused a lot of problems, had a lot of problems, and um, finally had to file for bankruptcy protection towards the end of September 2008. Exactly at that time, we registered a lot of interest, a lot of searches um, recorded by Google, which Google makes publicly available via the tool Google Trends, which allows us to access this information, to download it on a weekly basis. Indeed, we also found that searches for company names, such as Microsoft, um, are linked to the number of stocks traded of the company's stocks. So the more surges we could measure, the more stocks of the company were traded. Together with my collaborator Susie Mote from Warwick Business School and Jim Stanley at Boston University, we got interested in the question whether we can also say something about the price behavior. Can we use information collected by Google saying, telling us something about trends within a society in order to link this to subsequent stock market moves? We measured how many surges occurred in a given week, so let's call it week T, and let's say we are measuring the search volume of a term like debt, financial market debt crisis, and we compared the search volume to the search volume we have seen in previous weeks. If 
based on this, this, um, these quantities, we designed a very simple and easy trading strategy in order to in, in evaluate the, the, the question whether we have uh, the possibility to link this to stock market moves and traded the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. So when there were a fewer, fewer surges for the term debt in a given week, we bought the index at the beginning of the coming week and hold the position for one week and sold it the week later. Vice versa, if there were more surges for the term debt, we took this as a sign of concern, so this was a bad thing. And then we decided to sell the market in the coming, beginning of the coming week and bought the position back one week later. So let's see what would have happened if we would have traded following this logic, looking at the search volume for the term culture. The answer is not that much. In blue, you can see the result over time. If we would have invested based on how often people are looking for the term culture over time, from 2004, the beginning of the database, until February 2011, when we um, conducted this study, we just end up with a return of 5%. Compared to this, if we would have just kept the Dow Jones Industrial Average over this entire period, our wealth would have been increased by 16%. So a simple strategy which is called buy and hold. Let me show you another example. What would have happened if we have traded on debt? Changes in how often people looked for debt on Google in the US from 2004 until 2011 we would have ended up with 326% return. When we published this study, there was a lot of media interest in April this year. We gave a number of interviews, even the Financial Times um, reported these um, uh, results on their um, front page um, in the newspaper with the headline, Google Search delivers new line in revealing stock market behavior. So there was a lot of attention around this number, 326. But actually, that's just the beginning of the story and not the end. So we could just have picked this term debt by chance. And at the same time, it's not clear whether we would have been able to identify this keyword in advance before the financial market debt crisis occurred. So the core question in our study was, what makes a keyword successful? Successful to be an indicator for subsequent stock market moves. To answer this question, we looked at a range of possible keywords. And here I present you 98 different keywords with the term debt, which we have seen was successful. With the term culture, wasn't so successful. And by intuition, you could, could say debt is a term which is very much related to the concept of stock markets, while culture is not necessar necessarily something you would bring close to the concept of stock markets. If we look through the number of keywords which we have analyzed, then we get further support for this intuition. Stocks and credit work quite well, whereas garden and train was not so good. The main question going beyond intuition was then, can we come up with a method which actually tells us how financially relevant a term is? My co-authors, Susie Mode and Jill Stanley and I, we looked at this question and came up with the following idea. We counted how often these terms debt, stocks, and so on and so forth, were used in financial literature in the past and compared this to how often these terms are used in general literature. So as 
one major resource for financial information, we considered the financial times. So we counted how often a term occurs or, or had, has occurred in the financial times and normalized this by the fact how many Google hits we get back if we are Google asking about the term debt. By doing this, we created an index of financial relevance. The higher this index is, the more financially relevant, the more frequently this term is used in financial literature, such as the Financial Times. The main result we find is that this index is significantly correlated with the return we get based on Google searches. In other words, the more financially relevant a term is, the more likely it is that a strategy based on searches for this keyword is going to be successful. Google is one major resource for internet-based information, but there's another one. All of us know Wikipedia, the online encyclopedia which makes publicly available content, but at the same time makes also available how often people in the past have viewed individual articles. And even going beyond that, how often these articles have been edited by the general public. So the question was, can we find a similar relationship between information collected by, in, by Wikipedia and subsequent stock market moves. So we looked at a range of Wikipedia articles, um, all belonging to a topic of financial um, articles, financial topics, and what we found is that this blue distribution shows a significant profit if we feed in into our algorithm, exactly the same algorithm, the information, how often these Wikipedia pages got viewed over time. So general financial topics, how often they got viewed, is something which leads to a significant relationship with subsequent stock market moves. We find no evidence for a relationship between how often these articles got edited and the market movements afterwards. But we cannot only look at financial topics, we can also look at something very specific. We can look at how often people worldwide have viewed company pages of companies which are part of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So the 30 companies contributing to the value, to the index of the Dow Jones industrial average. Also in this case, we find support that changes in how often these articles get viewed can help us understand or can help us link this to subsequent stock market moves. More views for a company page in one week compared to previous weeks it's a sign of concern and we are more likely to see a negative stock market move the, the, um, the week after. So can we actually take any random set of Wikipedia pages to predict, at least historically, the market? So that's something which is probably not that likely. Show, let me show you one counter example. So we looked at something which shouldn't actually work. And these are pages on actors and filmmakers. And the, the special interest in this was that the, the size of this sample, so there were the, the same number of actors and filmmakers makers included in this category as in the list of financial topics. If we run exactly the same algorithm using how often people have viewed actors and filmmakers, we find something which is not different from actually randomly investing, randomly buying and selling throughout the entire time period. And this actually leads to the conclusion that there is no meaningful information in how often these articles got viewed. To summarize, we 
have seen that an increasing information gathering interest of people to look for financially related information on Google and on Wikipedia is linked to subsequent stock market losses. Nearly everything we do now involves a lot of technological systems with which we are interacting. This increases our productivity, this makes our life more convenient, and it allows us to do things which were previously impossible to achieve. However, these technological systems generate trails or digital traces of our everyday behavior. The results I have presented you today provide support that these traces can be used to analyze human behavior on a truly gigantic scale. They even suggest that in some cases it might be possible to predict our behavior. Thank you very much. <laughs>